Hi, I am Jerome from Fastlane. Welcome to this series on CCIE Wireless V2. Today I would like to show you how to configure DHCP Option 82 on the controllers, on the Cisco Switch DHCP service, and on the Windows uh, DHCP server. First, what is Option 82? By default, a DHCP service is unsecured. That is to say, any client can get an IP address from any server. You just need to have your clients on the right subnets, sending a DHCP request, and any server available in that subnet to provide IP addresses is going to provide an IP address. This is insecure for many reasons. The first one is that any potential attacker can get an IP address from your DHCP server and gain valuable information about your network, such as you know, the IP subnet you're in, the gateway you're using, and some options that your DHCP server is going to send, such as DNS um, service, etc. So that attacker doesn't need to be a wireless attacker, right? It could be connected to the switch, but as soon as it's requesting an IP address in the right subnet, the DHCP server here is going to provide one with all these valuable options. That's the first issue. Second issue is that any DHCP service can provide an IP address to a requesting client. That is to say, you have here a real client asking for an IP address, and if somebody connected here a fake DHCP server on that switch, that server may be able to provide IP address to that requesting client without the client knowing that it's a fake server. And the advantage, of course, for an attacker is to be able to provide fake information to you, such as uh, wrong gateway information that will redirect all the traffic to the um, attacker's laptop. So DHCP service is unsecured by default. How can we secure this? Well, with DHCP option 82, uh, your access point, your controller, anything that is going to relay the DHCP request from your client is going to have an identifier. In our case, the access point is going to have an ID, and the controller itself is going to have an ID. Then, on the DHCP server, you configure this option 82 that says, check the IDs. If the uh, client doesn't provide the right ID with its request, you just ignore the request and do not provide an IP address. This is useful for security, of course. It's also useful for many other reasons. For example, you can check the ID of a request coming from wireless clients because the uh, relay ID will be the controller ID and then you can provide a specific gateway for those wireless clients whereas if you get the uh, request from a wired client then you would provide a different uh, gateway for those wired clients so the HP option 82 is security related but it's not only about security it's also being able to provide the right options to the right clients when you use it with a security angle, most of the time you also configure on the switch what we call the HTTP snooping, which is basically the switch uh, checking the relay ID and configuring ports so that you know which ports are supposed to be the client ports or the relay port and which port are supposed to be the server ports. And because you do the HTTP snooping on the switch, you'll be only allowing the right packets on the right port. Okay, so how do we configure it on the controller? Well, it's pretty simple on the controller itself. You just need to go to Controller, Advanced, DHCP. You first enable DHCP proxy, and that's critical because you need to have the controller relay the query, so the controller must not be transparent. It has to proxy the DHCP request from your clients. And then as soon as you enable this option here, uh, you can set which option you want to send uh, to your switch. So you can send the identifier of the access point, the identifier of the access point plus the SSID, or the Ethernet MAC address of the access point. These options are pretty much the same at basic level. Uh, it's interesting if you want to filter the MAC address and the SSID because you can send different options based on which SSID the client is coming from. But for this first attempt, let's do just a simple AP MAC address. The AP MAC address is something that you'll see from the uh, access point configuration page if you take that AP as an example. The MAC address we're talking about is the base radio MAC address, okay? So that's the MAC address you see here. If you are using the Ethernet uh, MAC address, that would be here. Okay, so the first step is to enable uh, the HTTP option 82 here. Uh, the second step is to enable the option 82 at the interface level. So if I take my WLAN as an example, let's take the first one here, main one, pod one it's sending the clients to the management interface. If I go to the management interface here, you'll see they have um, a DHCP server defined, but there is nothing here that says how you enable option 82, and it's not enabled by default on the interfaces. That's something you have to do from the CLI. Uh, I'm running, by the way, 7MR1, which is 70116, uh, 70.116 code on the controller. So on that code, you cannot enable at the interface level option 82 uh, from the web interface, you have to go from the CLI. 
an easy way to check uh, option attitude support on your interface is to go show interface detailed and whatever interface you're looking for in my case management and you see here uh, the HEP option 82 is disabled by default why do I need to enable option 82 on my interface well because the controller is going to relay the DHCP request from the client and if you want to use option 82 the controller will have to add to the DHCP requests relayed from the client the identifier of the controller without this option the controller is just going to send a DHCP request without identifying itself so if you set DHCP option 82 on the server uh, the DHCP server it's going to uh, deny the request just because there is no identifier for the relay so you need to enable the option 82 here so that the controller relays the query and adds the identifier uh, along with it so that's something that is done by uh, doing config interface DHCP uh, so it could be dynamic interface or it could be the management interface in my case it's the management interface um, and then you just add option 82 enable as soon as you do that you can say show interface detailed again and you see here that um, option 82 is enabled now and you're going to send the AP Mac uh, something you have to be um, aware of is that the controller is going to send the access point MAC address as we configure on the controller but it's also going to send its own identifier as a relay and that's a number that is common to all the controllers that identifies the uh, WLAN controller so to speak plus the access point MAC address so you have both of information sent and one as one single hex uh, field that's it for the controller part so you configure option 82 on the web interface globally then you enable it at the interface level and that's pretty much it then if we jump to the uh, DHCP server let's take the easy case first which is the Schiller 3 switch so here if you want to configure an option the way it works is that you're going to configure what we call classes so classes are identifiers uh, for devices and for those identifiers you're going to provide options which is basically the IP address so I go conf t and the first thing I'm going to do is to create a class AP DHCP class and I'm going to call it for example 3502C which is my access point so I'm creating a class for that access point which is going to identify traffic coming from that access point and I'm saying that in that class there is what we call a relay agent information I want to provide so you just enter relay agent information and you say that the information this agent is going to send is actually going to be its identifier and that's going to be an hex string what is a bit complicated here is that that string again is the identifier for the controller plus the identifier for the access point the MAC address of the access point is the identifier for the AP so that's pretty simple that's right here um, for the controller all controllers have the same identifier which is a long number and I don't know you have to remember it pretty much it's not very difficult in its structure it's just a bit long so it's uh, 0104 then nine zeros one two three four five six seven eight nine then 206 that's the identifier for my controller so any controller is going to send that ID here so if you remember this number I mean it's the same structure for all controllers then you just add the access point uh, MAC address uh, which is in my case uh, D0C2 8267 and uh, 8B00 that's it. If you have several access points you can set several classes and for each of them you're going to send uh, this agent information. By the way if you don't remember the uh, controller identifier no big deal. Uh, when you'll be debugging uh, the HTTP uh, option 82 on the switch the switch is going to tell you what the controller sends so if you forget that number you'll find it back when you need it. Once the class is defined the next and last step is to configure the pool on the uh, switch so AP DHCP pool and let's say VLAN 10 for example and here what is specific is that beyond defining the network just like as usual right 10.10.10 .10 in my case 0 255.255.255.0 um, one ten too many um, and the default router of course 10.10.10.1 you're going to call the class so you say class and you call the class back and for that class you're going to assign the addresses and you're going to say address range and you get whatever address you want so for example 10.10.10.101 .10 .10 to 10.10.10.1 .10 .10 uh, okay that means that any request coming from class 3502c that is to say identified with option 82 from that number is going to get an IP address in here that's done. Next step is to try to 
connect a client. Okay, let's try. Let's clean up. And here I'm going to run a debug IP um, the HTTP server class, which is going to show me uh, what uh, queries are uh, being sent via the option 82 to that switch. Again, that's the switch as a DHCP server, right? Terminal monitor. And uh, I have a um, client here, and I'm going to have this client to try uh, to connect to that SSID and see if the controller is relaying properly the option 82 information to the switch. And surely enough, here you see it. So that's exactly the string that my controller is sending. So again, if you don't remember, you know, this long number, uh, when you debug uh, the HP server class, you'll see that number here. And you see that it's looking for the only class it has, which is 3502C, and it finds exactly that string into 3502C class. So that's the controller ID, and that's my access point ID. And if I say show uh, IP DHCP bindings, I should see, yep, my IP address of my client right here. Alright, so the HTTP option that you do is that simple on the switch. Windows is another business because basically option 82 is not well supported in Windows. Um, in my Cisco switch here, if um, my query doesn't bear that number, uh, my DHCP server is not going to provide an IP address. It's going to not find any class matching that number and not provide an IP address. Um, on Windows, if I go to the um, server, first of all, there is no default option 82 on Windows. On Windows 2003, it's going simply to ignore any option 82 you can configure. So I can always go here, cl click Add, um, say option 82. Here it's going to be a um, string, an array, so you can send several of those, and it's option 82. I can always create it here, um, and then once I'm in the uh, scope, I can go configure options and pick up option 82, and basically add this string. 0104 plus any MAC address I want from my access point. It doesn't really matter because the uh, server is going to ignore that option. So with or without this option 82, and even if you configure anything on the controller, the uh, DHCP server is going to provide an IP address. On Windows 2008, you can configure the option the same way. And if you Google um, DHCP option 82 API for uh, Windows 2008, you'll find a patch that some developers have written uh, to enable uh, DHCP option 82 support on Windows 2K8, uh, but on 2003 it doesn't, just ignores it, just doesn't work. So it's unlikely you would uh, use uh, Windows for the option 82. Uh, the iOS switch, of course, is working perfectly fine. And that's it for the DHCP option 82. Um, last detail um, that may be useful, although it's not directly option 82, is DHCP snooping. Remember, on the switch, you can configure uh, the HTTP snooping to say this is a trusted port because it goes to a validated relay, uh, this is a trusted port because it goes to a server, and all the other ports will be client ports where you would not have any DHCP server. Uh, that's a way to secure a switch by saying these are the ports where I'm expecting uh, devices that I trust, and all the other ports must be client ports. Um, so the way you do that on the switch is pretty simple. So you go conf t and uh, you say IP DHCP snooping first, that's the enabling the, the feature, and then once the feature is enabled globally, you can further define which VLAN you want the uh, feature to be working on, so in my case it would be VLAN 10. Um, and then you just go to some ports that would go to your DHCP server, if it's a, an external DHCP server, or to the port going to your controller, and you define the ports you trust. So in my case I have uh, one port I want to trust, which is um, the port going to my uh, controller, because I know the HTTP uh, option 82 is configured on my controller, so it's a value relay, um, and I simply say IP DHCP snooping trust. Done. And that's it for DHCP option 82.